well i welcome you to this presentation where we are trying to discuss topics related to analysis of determinate structures in today's class we shall try to take up a small portion of degree of static indeterminacy and then continue the discussion on degree of kinematic indeterminacy in the last lecture we had discussed one numerical problem connected with calculation of degree of static indeterminacy in rigid jointed podal frame with closed configuration so we are doing another example and if you just try to see the podal frame that you can easily recognize that this comes under what is called as closed configuration as you can clearly see okay there is a closed cell or a loop in this portion as well as a closed loop in this particular region so we call structures as closed configuration if you can start from a point okay and come back to the same point without retracing the path so again i can do the same thing here i can start from this joint just move up then right down and then again come back to this point so these kind of portal frames are called as closed configurations so if you just try to look at this example so we will be trying to solve this example using both approaches approach 1 where we try to divide the degree of static indeterminacy into two parts external and internal related to external indeterminacy it is purely related to the number of supports and type of supports we have for the structure it is calculated as r minus 3 where r is nothing but the number of independent support reactions so the first one is a fixed support you have got three reactions the second was roller one reaction the third one is roller one reaction the fourth is a hinge with two reactions so it comes up to 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 that is 7 7 minus 3 is 4 so this portal frame is statically indeterminate externally to degree 4 coming to the internal indeterminacy we calculated as 3 times c so where c is nothing but the number of cuts we need to make in the structure to bring it to open configuration so if we just try to check these are two places where i can make cuts so that it comes under open configuration this is not the only place i can make the cuts i can make cuts at any other two points and still make it as open frame structure in whatever combination that you can do the maximum number of cuts we can make here for this problem is only two so that means so 3 times c c is nothing but number of cuts to bring it to open configuration any further cut you make will divide the structure into two parts that is not permitted so 3 into 2 is 6 okay so the degree of internal indeterminacy of this frame is 6 so the total number of degree of indeterminacy is 4 plus 6 equal to 10 now the same problem can be worked out in approach 2 which is called as unified approach and the expression that we try to use here is 3m plus r minus 3j here m is the number of members so if you count the total number of members here it is 12 and r we have already calculated in the previous approach there is 3 plus 1 plus 2 and j is the number of joints which is 11 for this problem so we just try to simplify you get 
it as 10 here but understand this comprises of both external and internal so unified approach gives you a total number and there is no split that we can have here in this particular method now let us try to move to a small discussion here with respect to beams and plane frames having internal hinges so sometimes there would be internal hinges or releases in these kind of structures okay so you don't have any type of constraints at these points in such cases that is beams and plane frames each hinge will reduce the degree of indeterminacy by m minus 1 where m is nothing but the number of members meeting at that hinge so if there are three hinges this equation has to be applied individually to all the three internal hinges and m being the number of members meeting at that internal hinge so whatever value you get by doing sigma m minus 1 sigma is number of internal hinges we have here by adding this you get a number and that will be deducted from the value of ds that we would have calculated for the structure okay in the regular sense so let us try to take a numerical problem here and calculate the degree of static indeterminacy for this problem okay so let us try to use approach one okay in approach one we try to calculate as external indeterminacy plus internal indeterminacy minus sigma m minus one in this case there is only one internal hinge so you get only one term connected with that internal hinge so how do we calculate external indeterminacy it is r minus 3 r is nothing but the number of independent support reactions so at a fixed end you got three reactions you can get roller support one again one here and one here so r is nothing but 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 so that would be 6 minus 3 that is 3 so the structure is statically indeterminate externally to degree 3 now as you as we all know a beam belongs to an open configuration hence the value is 0 always regarding sigma m minus 1 there is only one internal hinge so there is only one term we have here with respect to that hinge so the number of members meeting at that hinge is 2 1 from the left 1 from the right so that would be 2 minus 1 is 1 so substituting the values ok so we get the degree of indeterminacy as 3 external plus 0 internal minus 1 because of the internal hinge that would be 2 if you are using approach 2 we try to write the unified equation then the modification with respect to the number of hinges that is sigma m minus 1 so substituting the values of m r j and the modification at hinge you get back the same value that is 2 but in this method you get the total number we will not get difference between external and internal now one more example connected with the internal hinge this is for a portal frame ridge jointed plane portal frame so there are two hinges ok that is given for this problem one at this joint and one at this joint ok so if we just try to solve this problem by approach one so we have external indeterminacy plus internal indeterminacy minus sigma m minus 1 gives you the total degree of indeterminacy regarding external indeterminacy r minus 3 where r is nothing but the total number of reactions ok at each support we cumulatively take it that is 3 at fixed support 1 at roller support and 2 at hinge support comprises of r 
that would be 6 minus 3 it is 3 now coming to DSI internal indeterminacy this is an open configuration portal frame hence the internal indeterminacy is 0 now coming to the modification that is sigma m minus 1 there are two inches and we have to write two modifications connected with that so at the first inch there are two members meeting so we write the term 2 minus 1 at the second inch we have three members meeting so we write 3 minus 1 when you add 1 plus 2 that is equal to 3 substituting all these values okay we get the internal indeterminacy as 3 plus 0 minus 3 so it is 0 that means this structure is statically determinate now if you just try to check the example using approach to so we have the unified equation followed by the modification substituting the appropriate number of members that is 5 here the total number of independent reactions 6 number of joints being 6 and 2 terms connected with each joint you are going to subtract that value so simplifying this we again get the value as 0 ok so it is statically determinate now a quick recap of the equations that we have been using to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy in case of uh, pin jointed plane truss in approach 1 we used the equation as DSC as R minus 3 and DSI equal to M minus M dash or M minus of 2J minus 3 in approach 2 the equation was M plus R minus 2J in case of B problem ok the external determinacy is R minus 3 the same as the previous case and DSI is 0 always approach 2 the equation is slightly different it is 3M plus R minus 3J connected with ridge jointed plane frames open configuration DSC remains same that is R minus 3 DSI is 0 coming to approach 2 this equation is very similar to the one that we used in beams now ridge jointed plane frames closed configuration the external indeterminacy is still the same R minus 3 however the internal indeterminacy is not 0 we try to calculate as 3 times C where C is the number of cuts we need to make to bring the structure to open configuration expression for approach to remain same 3m plus r minus of 3j and if you have any hinges suitable modifications have to be made at each hinges ok or additional equations have to be accounted at each hinge by using the expression m minus 1 so we need to take all hinges into consideration so that is why we get sigma m minus 1 and whatever number that is obtained will be deducted from ds calculated either from approach 1 and or approach 2 so this is how in general we try to calculate degree of static indeterminacy so let us move to the next topic that is degree of kinematic indeterminacy now when you just talk about kinematic indeterminacy it is nothing but the total number of independent displacements which include translations and rotations that exist in a structure translations are linear movements normally considered along the vertical and horizontal directions and rotation okay is nothing but the circular movement okay about a point now kinematic indeterminacy is also known as degrees of freedom DOIFs in beams and frames with rectangular configurations all displacements okay at various joints are independent however if the structure has some inclined members or sloping members some of the displacements depend on the displacements at the other joints 
The total displacements in a structure generally are computed at nodes. Strictly speaking, a structure comprises of thousands of points and at each of these thousands of points we will have the movements and basically the DOF is infinite but we are trying to convert it to a finite value and hence we are calculating at specific points they are nothing nodes which are nothing but the joints in the structure and the joints are nothing but where points where two or more members meet it could be supports it could be free end of member or it could be a point within the span where the moment of inertia abruptly changes so let us understand how we calculate the degrees of freedom at free joints in case of pin jointed plane trusses okay at each free joint we can expect two possible movements that is nothing but movement in x direction and movement in y direction that is translation along x and translation along y so when you take the structure and then try to load it you can expect the joints to move in x direction either right or left and the joints to move upwards or downwards so this is the only possible movement that you can think of we don't consider rotations as a DOF in case of truss problems because okay the joints are perfectly uh, free that is uh, frictionless so that is rotation is permitted so the only DOFs we are considering at all free joints in a truss are the horizontal movement and the vertical movement coming to the degrees of freedom at free joints in case of a beam or a rigid jointed plane frame as the name itself says rigid joint okay the angle between the members will remain the same it could be a portal frame or it could be a beam okay it remains same that is 180 degrees or it could be 90 degrees so in such situations we try to say there are three possible movements at any free joint in a beam or a rigid joint portal frame that's something but the the x movement the y movement there is linear movement, translations and rotation at a particular point. So one has to remember this. Okay, There are only two translations at a free joint in a truss whereas there are three movements, two translations and one rotation in case of free joints Okay, in a beam problem or in a ridge jointed portal frame. Now coming to the supports, Okay, some joints are supports okay so what you see there is a, a represented representation of a fixed support so how do we calculate the degrees of freedom it is calculated as 3 minus r where r is nothing but the number of support reactions so the value of r here is 3 you can have a vertical reaction a horizontal reaction at a moment and hence the value of dof is 0 so that means there is no possible movement of any sort that is translation or rotation in case of a fixed support in case of hinge support again we try to calculate the degrees of freedom using the relation 3 minus r where r is nothing but the number of independent reactions in case of a hinge there are two possible reactions a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction so 3 minus 2 is 1 so there is only one possible degree of freedom that we can have in a hinge and that is nothing but the rotation about the z-axis regarding the roller support again if you want to calculate the degrees of freedom how many it is 3 minus r okay in case of a roller support there is only one reaction that would be present normal to the roller surface so 3 minus 1 is 2 so that means there could be two possible movements and the two possible movements are one is translation along the roller surface in this case the roller surface is horizontal so the movement can be expected in the horizontal direction and a rotation of that point about the roller however if the roller surface is vertical the translation happens in the vertical direction with the rotation of the joint okay about that particular point 
Now let us try to understand how we normally try to calculate the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for different types of structures. So let us start with pin jointed plane truss. In case of pin jointed plane truss, the degree of kinematic indeterminacy is calculated as 2j minus r. That means for a given truss, there would be j joints. We are trying to take two movements at each joint, which both are translations. So 2j indicates there are okay two times j number of joints, which are which would be the total DOFs present in the system, but understand there are some supports and at these supports there are reactions okay and at these in the direction of the reactions the movements do not happen so you are trying to deduct okay r okay from 2j and that gives us the total degrees of freedom or degree of kinematic indeterminacy for a given truss okay this is the total number of joints and r is the total number of independent reactions that we have in the problem a simple example, we are trying to calculate the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the pin jointed plane truss shown in figure. So we try to calculate as 2j minus r. So the total number of joints we have here are 5 at top and 5 at bottom that is 10. So 10 into strictly speaking 20 uh, translations should be there. 10 in horizontal direction, 10 in vertical, but out of these, okay, some of the joints, some of the translations do not happen at the support. So that means at a hinge, both X and Y translations will not occur. At the roller support, the Y translation will not occur. Okay, so that means, okay, so we are left with 20 minus 3, that would be 17. Okay, and all these things are translations. Okay, so we can understand that there are two translations, vertical and horizontal, at all the free joints. So where are the free joints? That means all five top are free joints and the middle three are free joints. So we can expect horizontal and vertical movements at these uh, uh, um, eight uh, free joints. Now coming to the supports. Okay, there are two supports, a hinge. Okay, two horizontal reactions, roller, one horizontal reaction. So obviously you don't have DOFs along those directions. So we can have DOF only along the roller surface. Now coming to the uh, next numerical problem. Okay, so we have another configured press and we would like to calculate the degree of uh, static indeterminacy, sorry, kinematic indeterminacy of this particular problem. So if you try to look at the uh, degree of uh, kinematic indeterminacy okay, of this particular problem. Okay. So uh, we again start with the uh, total number of uh, 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 joints that we have here. So when you just talk about the total number of joints, okay, so you can count <coughs> there are uh, four free joints that we have here okay, and there are two joints which are constrained. Okay, so uh, the total numbers can be easily calculated as 2j minus r, okay, where j is total number of joints irrespective of whether it is constrained or unconstrained. So 4 free joints plus 2 constrained joints. So 4 plus 2 is 6. So 2 into 6 is what we write minus r. Okay, r is nothing but okay, the number of reactions that we have at these uh, uh, two supports the left support is a hinge support so the number of reactions we have at a hinge support is 2 the number of reactions we have at a roller support is 1 so 2 plus 1 is 3 and that's what has that's what has been written so 6 into 2, two is 12 12 minus 3 is 9 so all DFs as we understand here are translations so how do we uh, try to take these translations and mark it on the given truss. It is very simple. So we normally start with the free joints. There are totally four free joints. We try to give both horizontal and vertical translations at each of these four free joints. That would be four into two is eight. So if you just try to take out eight numbers, okay, from nine, 
we are left with one and that will occur at the roller support okay along the uh, surface that is along the surface of the roller okay so this is how we normally calculate and mark the degrees of freedom in trusses okay so let us try to move on to or uh, the next type of problem the next one we are going to start as beams in case of beams unlike the previous a uh, problem truss we are not writing any expression to calculate the total number of degrees of freedom or movements that can happen in the in this problem so normally this is done by inspection so in case of beams it's more simpler we try to inspect okay each joint and then try to understand what are the dfs that we have at each of these joints okay we try to take the summation of that and that will give us the total degree of kinematic indeterminacy total number okay so as i told you degrees of freedoms are generally calculated at the joints okay a maximum of 3 degrees of freedom okay are considered at a joint in a beam can be considered okay provided it is a free joint a maximum of 3 dwfs can be considered at a free joint so what are the three degrees of freedom that we can consider two translations one x one y and one rotation imagine you have a we are talking about the end of a cantilever beam the end of the cantilever beam when it is loaded can move in y direction when it bends there is also a possibility that it may move towards left x movement and then there is a rotation so two linear translations and one rotation can happen at any free joint in a beam okay and there is one important discussion that one should understand with respect to rigid jointed structures like beams and polar frames this is not applicable for pin jointed plane truss okay if this assumption is made that is members are inextensible or axially rigid that means a member of length 3 meters will remain 3 meters even after application of load that means okay there is no extensions or contractions happening in the members of beams and polar frames you cannot extend this assumption to truss if that is done okay the total number of dfs will be zero okay there can be no possible movement at any of the joints but however this assumption is generally made in case of beams and polar frames so that the total number of degree of kinematic indeterminacy reduces sufficiently and we normally try to make use of this assumption when we are trying to do the calculations manually when you're doing hand calculations we try to make this assumption okay and then compute the internal forces in a structure please understand in spite of this assumption okay the answers that we are going to get okay is do not deviate significantly okay even when you compare it with results that have been computed even considering okay the members as extensible okay so please understand when we make this assumption in extensible or axially rigid at a free joint we have only two movements which we consider one is the vertical translation we are talking about a beam horizontal members a joint can move a free joint can move in the vertical direction and it can rotate so we are not trying to consider any horizontal movement of this basically because a 3 meter member will remain 3 meters even after loading deformation so that means okay the x movement is not a load in this case okay let us check one numerical problem with respect to this so the first example is we have a three span sorry two span continuous beam two supports okay uh, i want to observe the uh, supports that we have written here the left extreme support is a hinge support and the intermediate support is a roller support the right end support is also a roller support so we are trying to calculate the degree of 
kinematic indeterminacy. As we said, kinematic indeterminacy is calculated okay, at each joint one by one by inspection. Let us consider okay, the assumption that members are inextensible. So the members are inextensible if the distance or length of the member AB is 3 meters and BC is 4 meters. Okay, these lengths do not change okay, even after deformation. Okay. Now we just try to check one by one. Well, let's inspect okay, support A. We are trying to calculate only at the supports. So at support A we have a hinge support. So we understand that at a hinge support no translations can happen. So we can expect only rotations to take place. Only rotations to take place okay, at uh, these joints. And uh, if you just try to go to the next uh, joint, next joint, okay. Again, the kind of uh, DOF that we can think of is again rotation. Understand, support B has a roller support, and it can, strictly speaking, okay, it can move in the along the horizontal surface, but because we try to say that AB length remains at 3 meters, okay, it cannot move, okay, though it, it can move, okay, because of the assumption, okay, support B will not move along X direction, cannot move along X direction. So the only movement that we can think of here is rotation at B. The same argument holds good even at support C, though it's a roller, it cannot move because Okay, the members AB and BC okay, will have the same length. So it does not have a scope to move in X direction. So the total number of DOFs that we have for this problem are 3 which is nothing but rotation at each of the supports A, B and C. Coming to the next example that is degree of kinematic indeterminacy in case of uh, 3 span continuous beam. So look at the supports. So the left extreme support is a fixed support and the remaining 3 supports are roller supports. So again we try to calculate the degrees of freedom by inspection. So coming to support A, again we are doing this problem with an assumption that members are inextensible. So there would be no DOF at support A because it's a fixed support. In the previous problem, the left extreme support was a hinge support. So a rotation was uh, present. Okay, the, the, the support could, rot could rotate at point A, but now because it's a fixed support, there would be no rotations. However, at each of the supports B, C, D, we have one DOF that is rotations. Please understand okay all these supports at all these supports bcd we cannot have the y translation because it is supported we cannot have the x translations x movement because of the assumption members are axially rigid okay length of the member will remain the same even after deformation so if you just try to count and then check the total degrees of kinematic indeterminacy so it is 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 so again it comes up to 3 so let us now go to the next type of problem that is plane frames. So when we are doing plane frames, okay, so we need to understand there are two types of plane frames. One is unconstrained plane frames, okay, and the next one is constrained plane frames. So let us try to understand when is a plane frame called as unconstrained plane frame. Now look at this group of members. So when you just try to talk about a plane frame, so we'll have group of members in the vertical direction or in the horizontal directions, both vertical and horizontal directions like that. So I'm just trying to take a case where we have a group of members. That means I've got two members here. Okay, and these members are supported. Okay, right, just like that. Okay, and if we just try to imagine that we have a group of members like this 
Now look at the kind of uh, constraints that we have at the extreme ends okay, of this group of members. So at the left extreme end, you have a hinge support. At the right extreme end, you've got a roller support. Correct? So this is called as unconstrained basically because at the ends, the constraint with respect to the movement along the length of the member is only in the, at the left extreme end. However, at the right extreme end, okay, it is on the roller. So we don't have a permit, okay, we don't have scope, okay, for it to uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, restrict its movement at the right end. So uh, that means both ends should not be constrained is what we are trying to tell you. Okay, so only constraint is there at the left end for movement in x direction. However, at the right end it can move because of the roller. Okay, so this kind of uh, group of members we call as unconstrained. So I'm just trying to give you one more example for uh, okay unconstrained uh, group of members. Like for example this one. Okay, so on the left extreme end it's a fixed end. Again it's held in position constrained. However, right end okay there is a roller it can move. Okay, so this is called as unconstrained member. So please understand if all the members present in a given plane frame fall, fall under this category then that frame is called as unconstrained product frame. However, even along one group okay, you have the end conditions something like this that means okay, at the left end okay, you can clearly see there is a hinge right even at the right end Okay, there is a hinge. You got a hinge here, right end. You got a hinge at the left end. So both points, okay, right, both points, the member cannot move along its axis. So it is held in position at both ends. So we try to call this as constrained plane frame. Correct. So not only this, you can also have one end fixed, one end hinged. So again, the horizontal movements do not take place. Okay, along the length of the member. So movement we are trying to measure along the group of members. So we can have one more case where both ends are fixed. So again along the group of members the horizontal movement is constrained okay along the group of members. So we have to understand plane frames are solved or we try to calculate the degree of kinematic indeterminacy okay under either constrained conditions or unconstrained conditions. Okay, regarding we will start with the, the, the uh, assumption that okay, members are unconstrained. Okay, so under this if you are trying to uh, calculate assuming members are extensible, so it is very simple. Okay, at each and every joint you got all three possible movements that is, that is I am trying to say uh, assuming everything is a free joint. So three possible movements x translation, y translation and rotation but however there are some supports Okay, and these supports we have got reactions coming up and they try to prevent the movements corresponding movements so obviously the degrees of freedom will reduce by that value r this is how you normally calculate in case of extensible members but we normally do the problem using the assumption members are inextensible or axially rigid so when you are trying to calculate the value of degree of kinematic indeterminacy with the assumption members are ex inextensible or axially rigid, we try to calculate d as 3j minus of r plus m, okay, where m is nothing but the total number of members that we have in the given problem. Okay, so this will give you the total count of degree of kinematic indeterminacy. So once you calculate, we have to again split that into rotations and translations for that particular example. So let us try to quickly take a, a problem here. That is, I have a, a portal frame here, okay, and and uh, we are trying to calculate, okay, the degree of uh, kinematic indeterminacy. So first, let us try to understand whether this qualifies as a constrained portal frame or unconstrained portal frame, because we don't normally uh, try to uh, uh, say, okay, this is a, a constrained problem or a or a unconstrained problem. We try to, we don't try to say something like that. Now coming to this particular problem that is, uh, 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 that is uh, constrained, so just look at this, we will try to take this top group of members. So the left is a free joint, even the right is a free joint. So that means it can sway, that means okay, it is not constrained. Now coming to the next group of members, 
so the left extreme end is again a free joint the right extreme end is also a free joint so again it can move look at these group of members in the vertical direction so the bottom is having a fixed support it is constrained but the top is not constrained okay it is free joint coming to this group of members okay aligned in this direction right so the the uh, direction that is the, the 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 this point is constrained with movement there is a reaction it will not allow it to move in the vertical direction but however okay this joint is a free joint okay in this direction so coming to this group of member this is a hinge there is a constraint in x movement however this joint does not any have any constraint so this qualifies okay for an unconstrained podal frame and we are trying to use appropriate equation to calculate the total degree of kinematic indeterminacy so we use that simple expression 3j minus of r plus m okay so the number of joints are 9 as you can clearly understand the number of members are 10 you can easily count and regarding r total number of independent reactions so we have 3 plus 1 plus 2 that would be 6 we substitute get the value as 11 so in this particular problem we have total degrees of indeterminacy or degrees of freedom as 11 but the next task would be to split or identify how many of these are rotations and how many of them are and the remaining one are translations and where exactly they occur okay so the first one would be of the uh, total number of DOFs that is 11 okay so please understand so let us first start with respect to rotations I would wa want you to first calculate totally the rotations and the remaining should be translations and then we will try to think of how to uh, 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 write these translations okay so first you finish off the rotations at all the free joints so there are six free joints here and all these joints they are rigid joints okay all the free joints can rotate so we are trying to say that okay this six at these six free joints we have ro uh, rotations so apart from that you can also have rotations at the constraints provided they are rollers and hinges you don't have rotation at fixed support so we are trying to identify one rotation at roller one rotation at hinge support so totally we have identified eight rotations in the given problem okay so we say totally there are 11 degrees of freedom out of which eight are translations sorry eight are rotations so the remaining three numbers should be translations now how do we write these translations okay so totally 11 degrees of freedom of this eight are uh, rotations we started with free joints and then we moved on to the supports and then we have written the degrees of freedom now coming to the translations we I would want you to start with the supports so at a fixed support you don't have uh, a translation at a hinge support you don't have translation at a roller we have a translation which is along the surface so I, I put one translation okay among uh, of the three okay at the roller surface now I've got remaining two which I will try to put one each along the first floor and the second story level okay please understand okay this is how we have to write the translations remaining two translations okay why we do this because of the assumption that members are actually rigid now look at this if this joint moves by five millimeters to the right please understand the joints okay here and here okay in the same line should also move by five millimeters to the right because of the assumption that okay members are actually rigid you can show this DOF at any of these three joints, one of the three joints. Similarly, the same thing happens here. So whatever movement that happens at this joint will happen at the same level in the intermediate joint and the right end. However, please understand none of the joints have any vertical movements because the bottom ends are held in position. Okay, and we are trying to say members are actually rigid. So we cannot expect any vertical translations to happen in this problem. I hope you have understood okay how we normally try to calculate the degrees of freedom in problems where we have unconstrained group of members so let us try to go to the example connect with the constrained group of members now when you just talk about the assumption members are extensible 
it does not matter you are trying to use the same expression 3j minus 3 the concept being at each joint there are three movements okay that is x translation y translation and a rotation okay we assume that this happens at all the joints constrained or unconstrained okay there is free joints but however at joints which are constrained there are support reactions which try to restrict the movement so obviously we reduce okay the value of a dk from 3j minus r but however normally we don't try to use the assumption extensible we always use the assumption inextensible or axially rigid when we are doing manual calculations okay and please understand now the value of dk is calculated as 3j minus r plus m dash it is not m like what we did in the previous case it is m dash and what is m dash it's nothing but total number of members after reducing the number of members by one along each group where they are constrained at both ends so when you are counting okay there would be some groups which are unconstrained okay where are there would be at least one or more than one group of members which are constrained at both ends okay we just count as it is in case of members where both ends are uh, free or one end is free and the other uh, fixed or constrained one end is not constrained so in such situations we count as it is okay when you're trying to take count of the number of members however when we have group of members where both ends are constrained okay the count should be like this okay we literally count the total number of members in that in that group and then we reduce it by one okay so this is how we try to do for each groups okay which are constrained so we just try to look at example you'll try to understand this very clearly so i'm just trying to consider a problem here okay so this is a uh, given problem where we are trying to calculate the degree of uh, kinematic indeterminacy now please understand this is a rigid jointed frame okay it's not a pin jointed uh, structure when you pin jointed we should have triangular panels this is a rigid jointed okay frame okay and uh, 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 please notice the supports that we have here okay there are two supports that we have here okay the left one is a hinge right one is also a hinge okay so both are hinges okay this is also a hinge that is also a hinge so that means this group of members there is four okay present along the bottom card okay is constrained at both ends for movement okay both are held so it cannot move so this qualifies for constrained type of portal frame okay right so let's try to solve this example now we are trying to calculate the total degrees of kinematic indeterminacy as 3j minus of r plus m dash so calculating uh, j and r are simple total number of joints 5 at top and 5 at bottom 10 total number of reactions 2 at each hinge that would be 4 now regarding m let us try to count first i have counted the top members that means the top card 1 2 3 4 i have written as it is 4 now the next is the group of members in the bottom card so 1 2 3 4 but since both ends are constrained i am redu reducing it by 1 4 minus 1 plus now regarding the vertical members please understand okay they fall under unconstrained okay that is both ends have to be constrained okay it's not there so we count it as it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 5 so when you're counting here m dash is 12 so there is only one group of members which are constrained so modification is done for only one group of members however in a problem if there are more than one group of members which are constrained you have to reduce okay the number of members by one for each of these groups individually and then take the total number of members okay so having got m dash we can now calculate the value of dk that is 14 now of these 14 we need to split into translations and rotations first let us start with the rotations okay so understand there are 5 plus 3 8 free joints so we can understand that all these free joints we have the rotations i have marked 8 8 free joints so 8 rotations further there are two hinge supports so we can also have okay rotations okay at these two hinge joints okay we can also have rotations at these two hinge joints so totally there are 10 rotations that we have here correct now when we did calculate the degree of uh, kinematic indeterminacy if you just try to quickly 
uh, go back and try to get that value. So we had said 14. Okay, is the total number of degrees of uh, kinematic indeterminacy. So of these 14, please understand. So we have finished 10 rotations. So we are left with four numbers as translations. So let's try to identify the translation. So let us start with supports. Both supports are hinge supports, so we cannot have any translations. So we are left with only free joints. And please understand, this is how we try to uh, give the uh, uh, translations. So one horizontal translation for the group of members, okay, at the top guard, which can be shown at any of these joints. Okay, please understand, whatever translations happen at the left extreme end, say 10 mm, okay, all joints, okay, in the same uh, line will have 10 mm movement to the right. Now coming to uh, the translations, vertical translations, we can have one here, one here and one here. So you can understand that we have given four uh, translations here. So totally it comprises of okay, 14 DOFs, 10, 10 translations and uh, four rotations. Okay. Now coming to uh, a last discussion, that is braced members. Okay. Here again we have the first category as members are extensible. So we try to calculate in the same way 3j minus r but okay we normally try to calculate it as inextensible or axially rigid members please understand this is a much simpler exercise we try to say okay none of the free joints will have translations i can explain so if you don't have any translation at any free joint all free joints will have only rotations and further okay dofs at supports have to be inspected and considered appropriately now this is a example connected with the braced member so braced is nothing but okay where you have got diagonal members okay in a rigid jointed polar frame correct now why we try to say there is no uh, translation please understand we do it by only inspection in this particular case so first we try to say free joints so there are six free joints that we have in the problem so at each of the free joints we write rotations okay so we don't write any translations at any free joint because please understand okay you can imagine that we have a right angle triangle here okay so we are trying to say members are axially rigid so if this is uh, if this is 3 meters that is 4 meter this has to be 5 meter all the time so that is this, this ratio has to main, has to be maintained all the joints should stay at the same point so even a slight movement you can expect the length of the joints okay the length of the members will change so since we are trying to say actually rigid members so please understand we don't have any translation happening in a braced member under the assumption members are extensible so we start with free joints we try to write rotations then we come to the supports inspect one by one and look at this okay we don't have rotation at uh, uh, hinge we have rotations at uh, rollers and uh, uh, hinges in support but further at roller we cannot have any translation because the roller is connected by braces so there will be zero translation okay at the brace okay so this is how we try to calculate the total uh, degree of uh, uh, indeterminacy kinematic indeterminacy in brace structures so i hope with this discussion okay we have uh, finished the discussion on kinematic uh, indeterminacy okay so uh, we have discussed uh, 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 connected with static and kinematic indeterminacy right so in the next class uh, we shall try to start discussions on uh, the uh, concept of influence lines and how we try to use it to solve numerical problems thank you